This is Justin Pulitzer. This is my weekend review for the week ending November 2nd, 2014. A lot to cover. Going to just dive right in. And you can see the markets have been really rather violent the last couple of weeks. Um, we had this, this big move down and followed by a just a strong rally back up. And for me, what I had discussed back um, when this first started was the key for the next move in the market was going to be the, the Fed day. And you can see we had a bit of a look above and then it failed and the subsequent short covering rally stopped just at the low of that day and then we failed pretty hard. This was a first touch of a 50 MA. We failed pretty hard below it, sputtering around, trying to regain it lower. This was a big reversal day. It came back up and failed again at the 50 and then had a, had a double bottom. This to me, I had said if we got below there was going to be an absolute cascade of price. It really was. Um, I caught a lot of that short. Um, unfortunately, I didn't catch it all. I would have liked to have catch some, caught some more of it, but I did do. We did do pretty well if you followed me on that. Um, down here, I had said when the VIX was 30 to start doing a little bit of nibbling in the IRA and some put selling with a selling with a VIX of, of 30, which is very hard to um, to not to not do that. And then I said we'd be looking for some possibly type of a rollback after a rally. So we had the rally. We came back up here. And I kind of started backing off from the idea of playing the short. And um, I never really did in SPY. Um, I, I was sort of looking for a bit of a, a short. I wasn't really so much looking at the 200, although that was a possible spot. I was really looking for this spot here, this, um, this failed double bottom for that price to reject. But that's not what happened. Um, we had a gap up that we had a gap and hold that day. And that's sort of when I started really backing off from the idea of having some type of a more big of a rollback and a correction. And I had mentioned that on the stream. Uh, a lot of uh, guys that run um, services thought that this was going to be the, the end of it. For me, I, I wasn't really so sure. Um, although we did fail right where we should technically on that uh, that downtrend line. But for, for some reason for me, it just it didn't feel like we were going to fail after this this type of a gap and a, and a, and a, and a hold. Um, we did roll back more than we sh technically should have, but I was really looking to initiate a short on a break back below this level because that to me would show that prices were unsustainable. But the next day we, we came back up. We had a bit of a um, an inverted hammer, but repaired that rather quickly. And I had mentioned that the... Um, that the uh, again that the Fed was going to be what was what was key here, um, and I had discussed that um, if we took out this high, that I thought the all-time highs were in play, and you can see this day was a bit of a gap here. We held, we um, we ran up over the 50, and the Fed day we never took out this low. Actually, this whole move here, we've made higher lows every day, and we've been one time framing, which is which is pretty bullish, although that isn't sustainable over a long period of time. So I am expecting some type of a rollback. It's just a matter of where it's from. So we took out the. Um, we took out the high of the Fed day, and then on a, um, a Japanese liquidity event, oddly, this was a Chinese liquidity event, so now we're doing it in Japan. Um, we had the bit of a, uh, of a gap and a hold, but um, finished a little bit toward the higher end of the day, but formed a bit of a doji. So the key here for me is going to be the low and the high of this day here. If we can get up above the high here, I think we will make new all-time highs. I don't know by how much because we've just come up so steeply, although I am expecting some type of a FIB extension. If we lose this bar though, the low, this 277, I do think we will fill the gap rather quickly and probably retest um, somewhere into this range. I would say that the, um, we, I mean, if this is going to remain healthy, we probably should stay above or contained within this Fed day. If we break that, then I think we could see some type of a deeper retracement, maybe to the um, 50 or maybe even the 61.8 fib. Again, let's not get a little bit too ahead of ourselves. I don't necessarily um, anticipate that happening so quickly. I'd like to see what happens with this gap if this window does fill up, um, which I do think is possible. Um, but keep in mind, there is a bit of a large gap here that could, it could, fi could fill if we do have some market weakness. Um, and that would also set up some type of a possible inverse head and shoulders. You can see we'd have the, um, the, the left shoulder here, the head, and then maybe come down here and build out a, um, a, right, a right shoulder. Um, how that resolves, I don't know. This is probably going to take days and weeks to uh, resolve, so I don't want to get too ahead of myself in terms of time frame. 
But for the time being, the high and low of this bar is going to be important. And of course, the high and low of the Fed day is, to me, still key. Um, if you take a look at some other markets, we've had um, some some pretty bullish price action. The, uh, the NASDAQ actually um, had a, uh, this to me looks, um, you, had a, you, came back, you came back up, you had a, a couple, few day consolidation. Um, I still have some, some trend lines from intraday play, so that just ignored that for now. But you had a, a gap above those highs and hold. So the, uh, the Qs are at a new all time high. A lot of that is as a result of Apple, I will discuss. But more importantly, the, uh, the market whip, uh, before we go to IWM, I wanted to show you something else. In SOX, I had talked about the gap below this, um, this long-term trend line that had been in place for, for several years. Um, I'm going to show you quickly. Um, you can see this trend line had been in place for a long time. And to me, this was a bit of a game changer. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that um, that it was just such a quick quick look below and fail because you can see we came down here and I had been discussing in a prior video that the high and the low of this um, this breakdown day or really breakout day because it was a breakout of range but lower was going to be key and we did get back above it we got back up above trend and now we're really um, almost back up near the highs we aren't at new highs with the Nasdaq so that's a little bit of a caution flag but rather impressive recovery considering uh, this large of a breakdown on a multi-year trend line. Uh, IWM had been, or should I say has been, the, the whipping boy of a lot of the uh, of chartists. I've played it successfully um, both ways, mostly short of late, but um, you can see I had said we were really in this just this really rather large chop zone and to discuss a short or a long trade over if we got over this um, this this triangular um, downtrend line, which was coming from higher low, I'm sorry, lower highs, or a short above uh, um, below this um, uptrend line, which was making higher um, lows, and you can see we did break that down. I did do a I discussed covering here down at these um, this references 177.44. We had a bit of a reversal that day, actually did go a bit lower. I was starting to feel like I was um, missing out on some of the party here and was kind of just playing it cool. And then we had a bit of a rally back up and you could see not only um, did we take out the 61.8, um, which was a confluence of, of events. You had a 50 day moving average and you had a, um, the, you had the back, you had the 61.8, the 50 and the, uh, the backside of this prior uptrend. But um, we now have come and taken, taken the downtrend actually. Um, so IWM is starting to look a little bit more bullish. I, it, it does need to take this, um, this high here. Um, it, isn't, it isn't a little bit of a danger of being a little bit too far too, too fast, just like the other, the other markets. So I am going to be uh, going to be watching it. This one doesn't have as big of a gap um, like in, in the SPY or in the, or in the um, queues. But there is room here maybe to chop a little bit, but um, the break of this downtrend line is pretty significant. So I'm kind of um, in caution mode with IWM thinking that maybe you know we filled up the, um, the triangle down this way. It's possible now that we do fill it up to the upside this way. Um, I have discussed in the past that moves over um, 1737 have been unsustainable in the markets. You can uh, in IWM, you can see we've, we've gotten up here and we've gotten to close to 121 both times. But those were um, short-lived moves, so maybe it is possible we do get up there again, and that might um, set up for some type of a, a rollback if it does come, you know, completely from the bottom like this, this steep type of a move, or um, it could be setting some type of a longer-term breakout. Um, if we do take these um, these highs, you know, we had the look below range and fail. Maybe we want to look above range. So IWM, I'm just keeping my my. Um, my eyes on here. If we do cross over this high, I do think it's possible that we do have uh, a move up and to retest the all you know the the all time highs into that area. Um, if we do have a bit of a rollback, I want to see if um, if this area here, this um, this trend here, holds again. You can see um, we might want to retest and kiss the backside of this downtrend line, or maybe even retest the trend if we do have a bit of a rollback early this week. But uh, IWM, like I said, this breakout here to me is very significant, and um, I am not looking to um, to short this so quickly, um, not at, not at this level. Uh, let's take a look at um, GLD. That's been another um, important important um, 
ETF in the markets, you can see we had um, a, a low here, a low here, a low here, and then a break. And the thing that's notable about this break is um, that we came down to a longer term 61.8 from the time when gold really had its, its had its had its run that started. Um, let's take a look if I can show you on this chart. I might have to go into months because it's so long ago. Um, weekly, yeah, you can see um, this was the financial um, crisis low after we had had the um, had the top. You know when gold got a thousand, and this was from the big run. And it really, um, the 61.8 can't coincided well with these lows, and we had a break on Friday. Um, it's it's a little noteworthy that the the way the price action happened, you did have this big break. I think a lot of people were playing for the breakdown, so they were probably covering. You don't have an elongated tail here, and what you had intraday was a double bottom. Um, it, without excess, you can see they um, they were trying to force price down. This felt like a bit of forcing action, probably late to the party people, and then price rejected up higher um, to close the day, um, you know, well off the lows and put in a bit of a positive candle. But my thinking here is that you had a lot of late entrance, and they were this was just profit taking. Um, you don't have excess. I would have really, for me, for me to have, to to make the bottom call on this, I would have liked to have seen some type of elongated. Um, you know, hammer, and we didn't really get that. Um, it is possible we do grind our way back up and retest this area, but I'm thinking that um, gold may still have a, uh, a lower low to make before it really has bottomed. Um, I, I'd be a little bit cautious though, shorting here, you know, be, just because we had the breakdown. I would think that you'd probably want to um, short somewhere, if you are looking to reshort gold, somewhere into this area where, um, where price had, had a little bit more. Um, I guess uh, had some more volume, not so much trying to play for the uh, for the breakdown. Um, you might want to, uh, to also test it at the um, at this breakdown level around the uh, the 114, let's say halfish. Um, that could be a good right or right out trade. If that uh, breaks through, I wouldn't fight it too much because that to me would be that this move here was the look below range and fail, and it could set up for some type of a re uh, island reversal if um, a uh, uh, from the downside, if we do have some type of a big gap up on Monday, like if we um, if we gapped up back over, over this level, that to me would um, would signal possibly a, a low. Although I'm not anticipating that, I think that gold has to, it probably wants to to go a little bit lower and put in some excess. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, Apple has been probably the reason this Nasdaq has looked so bullish. It's been in this um, this upward channel. Any price moves above the upper part of the channel, as you can see, have been unsustainable. Any moves below the channel have also been unsustainable. Um, I had been discussing Apple as a long over this over this this old high, this one 103.74. You can see we had ground, 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 and then once we took that, I had discussed 109 being the um, the 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 1.618 Fibonacci extension, and we're getting there really quick. The two things to note. One is that we obviously are within a point. It could easily happen on a gap on uh, up on Monday. But I would really be looking to take some profits here because you can see we are riding outside of the upper end of the channel. And you could see what happened here the last time. We were able to do it for a few couple of days and then wham, you came back down pretty hard and then retested the channel low. So I don't know, necessarily know if it's going to happen that drastically because you did have a break of this downtrend line on the earnings gap. And um, we have uh, we have continued up. You know, you, we had this reversal bar here at the old time highs, at the and then we we took it and kept on going. And that to me was the signal for a long entry. But now the risk reward is obviously shifting a little bit and probably looking a little bit more uh, a little bit more like it's time to take profits. So on rallies here, I would be looking to book some profits in in Apple for a bit of a rollback. Um, Facebook I had discussed on the on the stream and I had been saying that I thought that the consensus was getting a little bit too bullish in Facebook that um, everyone had been playing it long and it um, it did have a bit of a uh, it also was riding this um, this upper resistance band here which you can see has been has held it for a while we were starting to get a bit a bit above it and then the earnings took it lower um, I think the quarter was okay um, the concern has been that uh, Zuck is uh, spending too much money on his um, on growing the business, 
And you can see that took price down here below the 50-day moving average, below the previous earnings gap high. And we tried rallying back up, couldn't sustain there. Um, I had actually been playing this short with a, um, I had played it short with shares in after hours um, when it was still actually in the 80s. And I had um, discussed um, covering a lot of that in the um, in the after hour session, although I did keep some on for a test of the um, the trend, downtrend, particularly when we broke here. And I had discovered discussed covering at the 100 MA. That wound up looking a lot smarter than I probably am because that wound up being the low for the move. And um, we did come back up. But the problem has been this. We, um, we pinned the 70, we basically pinned 75, which was a big option strike. Um, we did hold, I, I would say, for all intents and purposes, sometimes the 61.8 does give intraday or even for a day. We did, we still have held this trend line and we came back up, although we failed at the 50% fib and we're still under the 50, we're still under the 20, but for me, what was really mattering was that this bar couldn't take the body of the, uh, the, the downtrend bar. So. I'm not really bearish on Facebook here, but I would just say I'd be a little bit cautious. I think a lot of people are still long and stuck in this just because of this big range and time that we spent up here, and they're probably a little disappointed. I'd like to see Facebook come back down um, and uh, you know, or or work its way higher. If it can take out the gap high of the 76.88, I think we'll probably play for a gap fill. Although for me, what I think would be um, healthy in Facebook is if it just had a, a couple of days of um, of, of, of burn off just from all the, the late people that kind of chased up here. Um, my, for my thinking is that if we lose this low here though, we're probably gonna continue to, we're gonna fill up this triangle here down to the low at 70 and possibly retest this rising 200 day moving average, which has been some pretty strong support in Facebook in the past in the 67 half-ish strikes in the options. So my thinking is uh, Facebook may have a little bit lower to go, but it probably isn't terribly much. You may overshoot this intraday just because it runs stops, but I think somewhere in the mid 60s probably will hold if the market stays bullish. Um, another one that has been um, one I've been discussing for a while is Twitter. Um, I had discussed with Twitter the important levels of 48 being bullish, 50 being more bullish, and 52 being very bullish. And unfortunately, we, we lost it here. Um, a lot of my position got stopped out. It still stopped out very well. Um, we had a bit of a rally back up. We, f we formed a bit of a downtrend here, and we've now gapped below the, um, the, the rally that we've had from the lows in, um, in Twitter. So we came down to a 61.8 fib. There's a gap fill down here. We've bounced a bit. So I think Twitter is like, quote unquote, okay. Although now that we snap this trend, we may wanna fill up the triangle all the way back down to these lows. It's very possible. So I would really look for this low um, or this gap fill area as the key. If we take out more than this, it's starting to look a little bit unhealthy. We did bounce a little bit ahead of it. It wouldn't shock me to see this get uh, taken a little bit, but um, if, you, if you did buy it for a bounce, this 39.94 uh, area is an important area, and you might not want to really risk much more than uh, a point or so below this. Um, I know it's it, that's it's a lot, although this isn't. I mean, you know, it's not a high dollar stock. It's not like you're playing, you know, Priceline and a dollar, you know, could happen in in a second. But um, I would be a little bit cautious here if this uh, starts giving giving way. Uh, if we do start breaking back up above the high here, this um, 44.58. Um, I do think we could retest uh, the trend, the prior, the, the prior uptrend and the prior downtrend up in the 47s, maybe even um, come up to try to retest and to fill this gap up to this, uh, you know, retest that 48 level. So that's what I'm kind of watching with Twitter. Um, I think that this stock is not as good as Facebook, just their management is, isn't as good and it's not as proven. So I'm a little bit more low to buy, you know, say that this is okay. I think that these guys need to put up some better quarters. You know, they really only had one so far that was good. And I, I had discussed, I think that the street really wanted to wait and see to um, see if there was two good quarters in a row. And if, and if that had been the case, I think we would be trading up at the all-time high right now. But uh, obviously we're not. And I think Twitter may have to um, do some backpedaling and some chop. So there's probably some better um, trades on the board than that at, at the moment. Um, Gilead is one I, I that's, this actually worked out completely perfectly. Um, I had discussed 
um, I want to just show you guys on a longer time frame. Um, I had discussed that this upper um, band here has been some pretty nasty resistance for some corrections. You can see here we failed. Here we didn't quite get there, but we, we as we got close, we had back offs. Here we got there, and then we had a pretty precipitous back off after a bit of a, a rally attempt. Here the same thing, and now here um, after their earnings. Um, we did come back up here and uh, and and backed off. I had discussed a um, this uh, this one to one point um, two seven two um, fib extension up at one fifteen seventy eight. So I said approximately one sixteen. We did get a little bit above there to that area and then backed off. To me, the key level now is this breakout level, this 110.64. You can see that this has been a um, a big chop zone. We did look below it and now we came back above it. Here we stopped um, basically uh, right right ahead of it. So that load, I mean, that, that breakout to me is important. If we start getting below there and below this, um, this wedge, I would say that you probably have a little bit of backpedaling to do, probably at least to the 50 and 20 and possibly to the, the 100 day MA. Um, if we do want to continue up, it is possible that there is room in the wedge to continue up to this um, 1.618 fib, the 122.33. But I would say that the quote unquote easy money has kind of been made in this stock. And um, here you may have to deal with some volatility in this range. And of course, the ri risk of once you start getting into a narrow edge is a more severe break. Um, so I would be just looking to take some profits on this thing on, on, on some further rally. And, you know, I, st I still say we did make an all-time high. I would be looking to buy the dips, but, you know, look to buy dips, not chase rips. Um, Google is a another one that was a bit of an earnings disappointment. Um, I had been playing this stock. It was a little frustrating for me with uh, making money, then getting stopped out on balances, and then you know back and forth. But um, you could see Google. Um, I, I had been looking for it to come and retest this to the tick, it and possibly overshoot to this trend. It never really made it. But now you can see we came back up to the breakdown zone, which was which was here, and it's also a downtrend line. Um, and we also have another breakdown zone, which coincides with the 200-day and 50-day moving average. So if you were one of these smart ones who did buy down here, I would be looking to take some profits here, either here or on any type of a little bit more rally. Um, I it could also, if you want to play for a right or right out short, this somewhere in this um, where we are right now to um, up to 577, somewhere in there that had 10 points, is a um, is an area to um, somewhere from between here and here. As you can see, this was the uh, the breakdown here, and this was the breakdown you can see of this price congestion. So that could be a good right or right out place. I mean, I realize it's 10 points or more because you probably want to put your stops a little bit there. But I mean, Google's a big dollar stock, so um, that is that is up to you. Um, I want to kind of see how the um, the Nasdaq trades. Like I had shown you in the chart, the Nasdaq's at highs, so this this resistance may not resist Google. We could have a breakout of that, and if we do get a breakout over there, then I think the stock can probably work its way back to the upside. But um, let's look for the Nasdaq for some cues. If the if the cues are weak, maybe we do take this for some type of a a retracement back down. Um, so that is Google. Netflix got saved by Mark Cuban. I think this stock probably um, would have traded a lot lower without him um, intervening. It had a really large outsides move of over 100 bucks here, but it has done nothing but, uh, but rally back. I had really been looking for it to come back to the um, retest these lows. Um, down here close to 300, which was also the uh, the pre-crash high before that, um, yeah, I would say pre-crash of, of the stock. Wow, this didn't um, even go back far enough. Let me go a little bit further. Let's just go five years, right? We'll do it weekly. Um, you can see we topped out here at 304, and then the stock really got um, really got smashed. I mean, this thing came back, back down into the 60s. So I was um, looking for this thing to um, to come back and retest in here a little bit a little bit more and possibly even break down. But we are not doing that. We're getting a bit of a rally. Um, Mark Cuban had stepped in and very publicly and said he was buying the stock and talked it up. And the stock has been rallying uh, since. So I don't really like to focus so much on the why, although I am giving it to you. It's the what. But you can see, look, um, we rallied up, higher or low higher low here basically uh, a little bit equal um, and then we've just been um, in this bit of a consolidation flag and then Friday we broke out so we may be looking to um, to fill a little bit higher the um, if you if you happen to buy it you might want to take some profits around here this 401 that's the 61.8 of the of the gap um, and 
Also, the uh, the 20 uh, MA kind of coincides a little bit there. But um, this stock might want to fill the gap and come back up to this downtrend if, if the NASDAQ um, does stay strong. You can see that coincides with the gap fill. To me, that would be an interesting point for a day trade short for a bit of a rollback. Filling a gap, getting to a downtrend, that could be a, a good spot. But um, if you're long, I guess stick with it. I mean, this, uh, this looks pretty bullish. I had actually played it a little bit long um, this day for an intraday trade. I took profits. Um, it wound up being a nice trade. But um, obviously, I left some money on the table here. We are going higher. But um, I would say anything still over this um, 387 high is, uh, is looking pretty bullish, and at least for a little bit more retrace in Netflix. I'd be careful um, jumping right in now and chasing, but um, it is, uh, you know, price is truth. We are, we are making higher lows and higher highs. Um, the last one I'm going to leave you with is, uh, is Tesla. You can see this stock has been a bit of a, uh, a bit of a mess, a messy chart. I had discussed taking profits up here near the highs, and I've really never looked back, um, other than um, a little bit of a trade. When we, we, we did have this break come back, come, come back down, I did play it long up to 265, um, and that wound up working. And since then, we've, we've been making a series of, um, of lower lows. Here we tried to rally back up, and this 265 has been a bit of a resistance. We've, we've still made lower lows. Although we've held some important FIB levels and we held the 200-day moving average, and now we're retesting this prior uptrend line. Um, I think it, Tesla has a little bit, possibly a little bit more gas in the tank here. If we do break up above there, we could retest this downtrend line and possibly the 50-day moving average. If that does break, I would say that you may see a, uh, a bit more of a rally higher. I have been looking for Tesla to really come down a little bit lower and retest this. Um, this would be a head and shoulders. Um, measured move down to 206. It's also a um, a measured move of a um, of a of this prior decline of about 87 points comes in around there, and it's also this, the the um, 78.6 fib. I don't really use that one that often, but when it does coincide with other levels, so to me this is really where I was kind of looking for more of a, a long in Tesla. I haven't been playing it long really since. Um, the, the points I had just discussed. If we did get back down here, I probably would take it for a long. Um, the risky run is a right or right out trade. If that breaks, then we maybe we fill it up back down to uh, to retest that that point the 177 level. But for me, this was a um, this is a uh, important confluence of numbers and um, and technicals that I think could set up for a, a bit of a long. So. Um, with that said, that's um, that's all I've got for you guys here for this um, for this weekend update. I will be doing some updates on trades during the week on the stream, and please be sure to follow me at Justin Pulitzer. That's my Twitter handle. And let's have a good week.